Hey everybody, welcome back to Jordan Samuel Skin Talks. How we doing? Are we getting close to uh, the end of January? If we are, I can't believe it. Anyway, I did not mention this. You can certainly see the Christmas decorations behind me because I'm filming this a few days before Christmas. So, happy holidays, happy 2020. We already did that, but we're still in January, probably. Probably. I know we're in, I know, God. I should stop talking. Anyway, today we are going to talk about assets. I have talked about this on, well, all the time. Um, but on Tuesday Talks, which are, if you are not familiar with and you are on Instagram, I try to do it as frequently as possible almost every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. I do a Tuesday Talks, which is a Q&A. You can put your questions in. Um, some of the information carries over from here, some from there to here. Anyway, but today we're going to talk about assets and sort of... Uh, the leave on wash off asset fight fight but so here's the thing is a leave on asset more effective than a wash off asset well yeah of course right you're leaving it on it's staying on it's continuing to dissolve the dry dead cell stimulate the fibroblast cells lighten and brighten and even skin tone can every skin tolerate a leave on acid when used regularly absolutely not um it can just be the way you are. It can be from something else. Maybe you're on a prescription retin-A, maybe you're on just an over-the-counter retinol and an acid is just too much for you. And I just feel like anymore there's been this bashing or this poo-pooing of these um, rinse off acid products. Now, of course, if you're looking for a certain result, you're not necessarily gonna see that with a rinse off acid product. And when I say a rinse off acid product, what I'm basically speaking about is uh, a cleanser with an alpha hydroxy, beta hydroxy, or polyhydroxy acid. Uh, I, a mask, an enzyme mask, an acid, alpha hydroxy, beta hydroxy, polyhydroxy mask that you're going to remove. Um, but something like that that you're removing that you're not keeping on for a sustained amount of time. Compared to a leave-on, which would be your serums, your moisturizers, or your acid toners. Um, that is something you apply to your face, leave it on for, you know, up to 12 hours probably. But... Where I get frustrated is, as somebody who is very sensitive and leave on, acids are really not my cup of tea and not for me, and it doesn't matter how gentle they are. I'm even using a 1% glycolic currently. And I'm like, oh yeah, great, I can do this every day. No, I can do it like once a week, maybe twice a week. Um, and I know I'm not the most sensitive of sensitive, I'm sensitive, but I've met people that are way more sensitive than me. Um, but I just wanna say that don't, go chasing waterfalls, don't uh, poo poo. Uh, wash off acid products, whether it's a mask, an exfoliating mask, or whether it's a cleanser. Remember, that little bit, it's still on. And I feel like everybody here really is taking the time to wash their skin. We're not just doing a quick pat, 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 and rinse off. So if you're using a cleanser, really work it into the areas of concern, of congestion, because it's still gonna exfoliate the skin. Are you gonna get that intense sort of stimulation of fibroblast cells? No, but in terms of cleansing the skin, exfoliating the skin, you're gonna get that. And you're gonna get the same thing with a leave-on exfoliant mask. Remove that dry dead layer, clear out the pores, lighten and brighten. Maybe it's not gonna stimulate the fibroblast cells as much as you would like, but you are still helping to create that smooth surface, to remove that surface dryness, to exfoliate the skin, while, especially if you're sensitive, not sensitize the skin further, not create redness, or maybe allow you to continue to use your retinol, which is you know a great ingredient and a great product, while still getting exfoliation. So don't think it has to be one or the other, and I've been frustrated seeing a lot of people being like, well, it's a wash off acid product, it's not gonna do anything. Not true, really. It's still gonna do some stuff, um, and some of the percentages can be high in wash-off products. And again, some of the wash-off products can be a mask, which is up on for, for up to 10 minutes. I mean, case in point, in a way, is sort of like a chemical peel, which this is a bit of a stretch because it's a professional strength and it's so much stronger, but you're leaving that on for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, you know, it's not, and you're getting this really great result. So just remember that it doesn't always have to be a leave-on product. And I see so many people, and I do get a ton of questions because they know that they're talking to like sensitive king here about leave-on acid products um, and they feel bad that their skin can't use a leave-on acid product. There are many other options out there. You can do, you know, a really gentle washcloth will still exfoliate your face. A really gentle scrub will still exfoliate your face. Um, so will a cleanser with an acid in it um, if used regularly. So will a mask that you use maybe once or twice a week. Again, same thing. So don't feel bad and don't feel like you need to push it and uh, 
find that leave on asset product that works for you. Um, I would love to come up with one and I would love to create one and the asset has been the bane of my existence because I really want to, I just see so many redundant asset products on the market and I'm working to sort of change that and, and try to find that special place for a sensitive folk. Um, but it's hard and it is tricky and it has taken over a year now and it, the journey continues. So if that gives you any idea. Um, but on a note about assets too and connecting back a bit to the video which this would not be Jordan Samuel Skin Talks if I was not connecting back to a video from, you know, two weeks ago and confusing everybody and making everybody go watch the other video and then I'm talking here about that and Tuesday Talks and everything. But it's all connected, right? It really is all connected. That's the thing about creating healthy, glowing skin. It is all connected. So all these videos should piece together. But I do believe that we are now out. Have you heard the term of like, you can't outrun a bad diet? Super true, unfortunately. Um, but... I really think we are now out aciding our SPF usage and people are being real great with their asset usage and their leave on asset usage and they're being real weak with their SPF usage and then they're confused because they're using this really great expensive asset starting to see smooth skin but then they're seeing hyperpigmentation then they're seeing redness they're seeing descendant capillaries dehydration irritation inflammation um, and their SPF game isn't strong and you can't have one with well you can have the SPF without the other, but you cannot have a strong acid game or retinol game without SPF usage. And you must, you must, you must get that in check. Find that SPF. If it's pricey, but it, you'll use it, go with that one. Um, that is the place where actually, you know, people always say like, oh, do you spend your money on cleansers or serums? And people always say serums. Honestly, spend it on SPF. It doesn't have to be super expensive, but if for some reason there's a pricey SPF out there that works for you, that is where I would put the budget. Everything else then you can factor in, but that is something that's gonna keep the skin vibrant and healthy and it's preventative. It's going to stop the breakdown of collagen in the skin and dehydration and redness and inflammation. And in this day and age of actives, whether the wash off acids that we talked about, um, high percentage of vitamin C's, retinols, we're getting professional treatments, we're getting laser resurfacing. Um, you need to have the SPF in check and I really do feel like we are out aciding our SPF usage, which can be extremely detrimental for many, many reasons. Um, but get that in check first. Do not forget the basics of a really great healthy skincare routine. Again, going back to the video from probably last week or two weeks ago. Um, and also take into account great sleep, good diet, de-stressing, all those things matter and really create a healthy glowing skin. I promise, proof is in the pudding. I've seen it on myself and on many others. Anyway, I just wanted to get that tidbit in there about the SPF and the acid thing because that's been bothering me too. I might elaborate on that a little bit later. Um, but I think we all know that too. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope January is treating you well. Uh, and until next time, bye.